Hi, I'm Suze Shaner with Sage Leadership Strategies, and I'm your host today of Community Forum. And today I have Eve Emerson, who is an executive coach and organizational development consultant, back on. Eve was with us a few months ago, and where we talked about our collective experience working with leaders during a number of crisis periods uh, in this country, the United States. Um, we talked about 9-11, we talked about 2008, and we talked about this past year with the pandemic. So Eve's back on. We're going to continue the conversation in terms of what we've learned this past year in terms of leadership focus and energy that's required to get people not just through the pandemic and economic economic downturn or challenges at this point, um, but actively managing the situation, being proactive and strategizing about how we can move forward. So welcome back, Eve. Thank you, Suze. Happy to be here. And it's a uh, lot's happened since we last spoke. We had an election. We have a new president. Lots of new things have happened. So, so that's, the time goes very quickly. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And in full transparency with our viewers, I mean, you and I, um, ongoingly, multiple times a week, uh, have these kind of leadership conversations, and because we work and collaborate together on offering various programs. So today. Um, wanted to start with our first question. Um, what have you observed with what your clients are grappling with during this time? Yeah, no, great question. And like, again, you know, lots, a lot's happened over this last year since COVID. And um, I was in the middle of coaching clients. So pharmaceutical leaders, um, back when it happened, when we first got into lockdown and really through the, the process and the shift. And it was interesting to watch the transition of what leaders were going through around making sure their people were safe, making sure that business continued. You know, part of their goal was to get the drugs out to market because people still needed their medications. And so they needed to keep their plants open. So there was a lot of very quick, creative kind of ways to keep the business moving and at the same time focus on their employees, right? And making sure that they were safe, that they need, they had what they needed because people were now moving to a remote environment. So a lot was shifting and changing for leaders um, this whole past year. And I think as the crisis began to move on, there was an immediate, you know, kind of, um, solution oriented focus that had to, had to happen right away and then people started to adapt they started to to get more creative and so i think for now where people are and what i'm hearing is keep the business moving because that's still a priority and a lot of people had to drop that at the beginning of the pandemic but now that they've gotten things a bit more organized it is about now how do we keep the business moving while at the same time making sure that we're still staying connected to our our people because they still need to hear from their leaders. So leaders have gone from maybe talking to their team members like every other day, every week, to maybe now, you know, a more um, elapsed time frame around maybe monthly, maybe every other week. So people don't need that connection um, as they did at the very beginning. So things have, you know, kind of business, not business as usual. I won't call it that because there is no more usual. We're creating as we go, but it's really keeping that balance around how we drive business and how we continue to maintain the compassion and the caring for our leaders, for our teams. Well, you know, it's interesting, um, similar, Obviously, I've seen a lot of this with my clients as well. So it's, yeah. it's the balance of how do you, quote, drive the business forward to get done what you need to get done. At the same time, I know a term that you and I have talked a lot about for a leader to create the container and make it OK to yeah. have the kind of conversations to hold. I'm going to use that word, you know, the emotional space for people um, to manage everything that they're managing, because depending upon somebody's living situation, particularly for those who are socially distant and who are not back to offices and who mm -hmm. are rem working remotely, um, for those who, who are working in person, then they have to ensure that they're maintaining their own COVID protocols. But those who are working remotely, um, I, I you know, what I've seen is, to your point, it's like how, where, and when do you need to have the connection to make sure that um, you're aligned with the work and that your people are okay with everything they're managing. Cause if somebody's living alone yeah. and 
you know, really socially isolated, maybe for a year, we're coming up on a year now. Um, or if they're like dual, you know, a couple that, that both are working and they have school age children, then that's a whole other different level and complexity of everything they're managing. It's interesting. One of my clients said to your point early on, they were first when everything hit, they were, they were meeting every day because literally there were like moment to moment decisions that needed to be made. Then they went to, you know, three times a week, you know, then he asked me, well, how frequently should I be meeting with my team? You know, and in a typical coach consultant answer, I was like, well, it depends. I mean, you know, what, what is it that you're trying to accomplish and what is the reason for your meeting with your team? And so I think that we've seen that leaders have a, an added layer of care for their mm-hmm. team. So not just the work right. of the work in terms of how do we align on the work and what needs to get done and who's going to do what and how are we maybe in some cases punting or reconfiguring our plan because we've got new information in terms of what we can or can't do or what's happening with our customers. Um, but also where and when do you need to check in individually and collectively with your team to see how they're doing? Um, right. and that's kind of elevated the conversation in this country and around the world in terms of, you know, just mental health and, and how everybody's doing, because while we know that when people are successful, they tend to be happier. We also know that happiness or a sense of feeling okay drives your productivity, L- looking at it from that standpoint. Yeah. So what would you say about that, Eve? Well, I think you're spot on. I mean, I think a lot of clients that I've, I've, I've met over the last few months have been grappling with that just from their own standpoint of vulnerability and the emotions that they are dealing with, right? Because as a leader, they're humans, right? So I think what's what's happened over the last few months is that people are tapping into their humanness um, around who they are, what they believe in, what their family life is about, and how they deal with situations. So leaders have had lots of challenges around how they show up. One Somebody that I was coaching a few months back was kind of taken aback because she had sent this whole communication out to her team thinking that, you know, I have to communicate because the more I communicate, the better. And it was such a long communication that her team was bold enough to actually give her feedback and say, we appreciate it. And it was really too much. Like, here's what we need. And she said to me, she said, you know what? I learned something about how I'm showing up in this and what I need to do, not so much for myself, but really listening to my team and what they need. So there has been a lot of learning for leaders um, in these past few months around how they show up, how they communicate, and really tapping into what their teams need from them. Because as we know, as as leadership consultants and coaches, everybody needs something different, right? Um, To your point, you know, people are living alone. They might need more connection. You might need to continue to, you know, call your folks um, weekly or biweekly. You know, people are dealing with it very differently. They have different support mechanisms. So you have to be in, in touch with what people are really needing and then how to provide them with what they need. So leaders have become more vulnerable um, in this in this time of, of chaos because they had to. Um, well, and it's you're, been tough. You're, hitting, you're hitting on a couple of things that are really important. Yeah. Um, the, the, the term vulnerability, that's a tricky term because most people don't like being vulnerable. Most people don't say, yay, I'm going to go out looking for vulnerability because the very nature of it is yeah. uncomfortable. It's scary. You don't yeah. want to do it. You're feeling really exposed. And let's face it, so much of running a business or an organization is about how do you limit your exposure and your liability. You also hit on something else that I think is critical in terms of, yes, we know in times of change or crisis and chaos is more frequent communications, but the volume of communication, Mm -hmm. there's something that, um, there's been so much complexity and so much uncertainty. So what it kicks in with a lot of people is kind of their backup style. How do people behave when they're under stress and how many things can they be juggling at the same time and the level of complexity? So what I've had to talk to a lot of my clients about is this concept of allostatic load. Um, I, something I learned through the yogic tradition when I became a yoga and meditation teacher that's been 
phenomenal, as well as my training as originally as a therapist has really helped me during this time, not just only with myself in terms of self-care, but with my clients. Right. But the notion of allostatic load looks at the sum totality of everything that you're carrying in all your your total stressors. So it's not mm -hmm. any like one thing. So the way that I like to describe it is, you know, if you have a pot of soup and you're throwing in all these in, these ingredients, is you're throwing in carrots, you're throwing in potatoes, and maybe then you throw in another potato and the soup overflows. Well, it's not that last potato. It was like everything that came before right. that was suddenly, you know, like you're going, the term used to be like, you know, going postal or you have a meltdown and that meltdown looks different for everybody. But, right. but we know the role of a leader is to um, weigh and assess everything that they're juggling and, and to make decisions and inform decisions and strategic decisions, but from a neutral place. And it's, and so, so that you're, you're not overly emotional with the decisions that you're making. So they really are best serving you in the organization. So um, I'm just curious in terms of like your, the example you gave of your leader, like she realized I need to communicate. I communicated, but it was a big chunk of information. And like, so it's like these, these micro chunks that, that can help people just kind of pay attention to what do I need to know like right now because they can be you know overwhelmed or just flooded with too much. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I think one of the things that um, like that leader in particular, and then some other leaders that I was coaching in the group coaching circle um, as well was that you know when I asked them how do you be more proactive now rather than reactive. So I think at the beginning of the pandemic, everybody was very reactive, not knowing what to do, how to do it, you know, where to start. Um, how to deal with all the changes. So very reactive. So I posed the question around, well, let's think about how to be more proactive. You know, what are some of the things that you really need to be doing? And to your point about the load is how do you pace that communication string? How do you pace the interactions? Um, some of the things that that they were thinking about, and again, they had to really reflect and think about it because they hadn't thought about it. They never had the time to stop and think, okay, let me slow down to go fast, right? Um, it's really more about, you know, how do I show stability? How do I show um, the confidence and create confidence for, for my team? And part of that is how often you communicate the message, the trust that you build, the relationship that you begin to build with your team is a lot deeper than it may have been before. So if you continue with those building blocks around the relationship, the connections, people will begin to trust you as a leader and listen more so that the communications you can, you can then have and produce those soundbite communications of what's happening in the moment so people can be brought through the journey with you rather than as an afterthought. Um, so, so again, it, it, and it does take a leader to step back and really think about how they're showing up and ask for feedback, right? So we've always, you know, learned along the way that, you know, leaders need feedback, but they also need to ask for it. And that also kind of creates that open box of vulnerability for them, right? So if I'm asking for feedback, it doesn't mean that I'm weak. It doesn't mean that I don't know what I'm doing. It means that I'm checking in to make sure that I am doing what my team and people really need from me in order to progress them. So it's making that connection and building those relationships that become even more critical now than they were before. And it's part of the shift that we've seen, this energy shift around where we started with COVID and where we are today. And it's really made everyone, you know, and you hear about this and you read articles about it all the time. It's like people are really, you know, shaken by it. Um, it, it was a wake up call for everyone around what matters and what's important to us. And so it takes a lot for leaders to step back and really have those conversations with themselves around what matters to me as a leader, what's What's important and how do I then carry that through and pull that through um, against the, the goals that need to get accomplished within the business? Because that still has to happen, right? Business yeah, and, and you're hitting, yeah, yeah. And you're hitting on, on something else, too, in terms of for leaders to step back and reflect on what's really important to them. And also that they're 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 staying connected and paced. Um, it's a word that we've talked about a lot yeah. with with their their people so that um they're also speaking to things that matter to their people now because to your point we're all different now yeah. and, and and there's a lot of hope because of the vaccine and different reasons but but we're still in this you know unfolding mint um the other thing that you talked about is leaders making sure that they 
um, solicit feedback. And it's so interesting. It's like, you know, when you, you say to your friend, come over anytime, well, anytime's no time. You know, it's like an invitation, give me feedback anytime. And, and, and I find that when my, when some of my clients say that, um, you know, some other people will not do that. So it's like, it's like, yes, open the door. I, I want your feedback. And it's also soliciting it at a level of specificity, like, right after a meeting or in the context of a meeting like what do you think so so it's it gets specific so people know that oh they're asking for my feedback right now they want my feedback on this specific thing and then of course we know the next step is how do the leaders receive that feedback and how can they hear it and what what do they do with that feedback um you also you also hit on a couple a couple things around tools and strategies and different things that leaders can do um, I'm curious about anything else, um, either things you've recommended or things that your leaders have tried and experiment. Cause this is, a, this is almost like open the door for people to be yeah. experimental. So anything else in terms of what they've had to do to get greater connection engagement from their team. So they're, they're staying closely aligned or self care for themselves or their teams or anything else around, <clears throat> you know, how can we carve a path forward and be proactive mm -hmm. when there still may be so many unknowns, whether it's, you know, they're closing down a business or they're going into a new market or they need to determine, can we, can we open our offices? And if so, when, and how do we do that? Um, anything else in terms of that you've recommended or that you've seen leaders try that have worked that have been successful? Yeah. I think, you know, again, the self-care piece is really important as I, as I've done, you know, my one-on-one -on -one coaching and even group coaching, a lot of stress that they've they've expressed for themselves. Um, a lot of people were, my recommendation, and then they've just taken it on themselves, is really that meditation, that quiet time, that reflection time, because there's so much happening and there's so many things that they're thinking about and so many pressures themselves that they're bearing that they've, they've learned how to just kind of take a step back, be quiet, meditate so that's become a very popular thing these days because i think in the past that wasn't something that we talked about in the corporate world um but you know exercising more um because people were home um people were making sure that they were getting outside um the one thing that i found that people were getting caught up in is overwork because now that they're home their computer is in front of them and they lose sight of the boundaries around time right because you've got access to your computer all day. So people were working a lot more. Um, so production was high. And what people were saying is that their teams were way more productive because they were focused, right? So people were really helping themselves stay focused on the jobs that they were doing. So the care was, you know, again, mod um, meditation, but also being mindful of their schedule, right? C creating that container, as you said before, around their own schedule, their own work hours, so that they weren't burning themselves out. Um, as well as connecting with their team. So they were being very creative on how to connect with their team. They were doing coffee Zooms and they were doing, um, you know, um, parties and five o'clock, you know, happy hours on Zoom just to keep people connected as they were, as they would, you know, face to face in the office. So they were being very creative um, in how they were doing things. Yeah. So you're hitting on a couple of things again. Um, this quiet time, I mean, we know from all the research in, in neuroscience, so it's not just that it, it, it does feel good, but it's also scientifically validated, mm -hmm. especially it's counterintuitive. When people have way too much on their plates, the tendency is to try to work harder, but oftentimes that's the time that you need to go silent and just kind of, and whatever that means for you, people have their different methods and approaches, but the quiet time allows things to settle um, and it allows people to determine, <clears throat> Dave's asking any tips on goal setting for the new year. We have a, a question in the chat here. Um, and that's, that's really about priorities as well in terms of what's really important. And, and the whole notion of priorities, I think it's about having transparent and fluid conversations around that. So what's a priority today or this week, maybe completely different next week. Mm -hmm. And so I think that one of the things that this time has brought about is it's it's been a real forcing mechanism in a deeper and broader way across the globe of people working very iteratively and in an agile fashion and to think more about e experimenting. Well, we'll try this. Well, let's see what this works. So, so whereas 
people may not have pulled off the aperture before. They they have to. These times have really warranted it. You also mentioned about you know boundaries and and what's work time, what's home time. Mm-hmm. I mean, I've been working full or part time, you know, from a home office environment for 15 years. So so but for many people and on Zoom for years, but for many people this was all new and it so it does require a whole adjustment. And again, there's so much now tips and approaches around that, but yeah. anything you found in terms of um either lessons learned cuz cuz I've done exercises with this with my clients and and even other <clears throat> coaching environments that I'm a part of um you know lessons learned from last year and how they're going to shape and inform your goals for this year and how you set and maybe reset and continually calibrate against the goals you have what yeah. what what can you say about that yeah no I think that's a really great question and and approach because what people were learning um, as I mentioned earlier, is the more focus people had around something, um, the more um, productive they were. So at the beginning of the pandemic, they found that people were more engaged, they were more motivated to do the work because they had something in common to focus on, right? They had something in common that was still business driven, business focused, and really important. So the more that you can, as a leader in this time, Focus the goals, and maybe it's one or two key goals, right? Because we don't know what tomorrow brings, as we've seen the last year. Um, you know, every month it's something new. So I think it's important to recalibrate those goals, maybe monthly, right? You you pick the time that works for you and the organization, but pick pick a way that you can focus on one or two key goals that somebody can then rally around, gets them motivated, gets them excited, gets them energized. They're working and collaborating with others. So it, it, it's the recipe to really help them be motivated and enjoy what they do. Um, so you can then refocus that. And then another month, take a look at are these, are the right goals. How have we done? How have we accomplished them? Do we need to tweak them? Do we need to modify them? Um, you know, what's new? Is there something that we're working on right now that maybe doesn't make any sense anymore? Maybe we have to put it to the back burner. So I think it's important, again, it's part of that communication and open dialogue with your team members is to really understand, you know, what they're working on, focus them on one or two key goals, and then, you know, iterate on that and really revisit them to make sure that they're the right goals. So so in that context, I want to ask you, how would you describe the role that feelings and emotions are playing during this time in the world and in relationship to how work gets done. Yeah, I mean, that's so critical. I think I've, as you know, we've been talking about this for a while now, and I keep getting more passionate about this, that it's changed, right? We've we've had this wake up call. So we're all very different and how we operate right now is very different. So we've always told leaders, I mean, I've been doing this for 30 years. We've always told leaders that, you know, you want to take care of your people, make sure that you're communicating, make sure that you're connected. And we've always communicated that, but it's different now. Now there's there's this business need and imperative that says you cannot operate and deliver on your business goals without the compassion, without the caring for what's happening in people's lives. Because if they're not happy, if they're not getting what they need, you're not going to get what you need. The business won't get what they need. And so the, the whole notion of showing that vulnerability um, is critical right now where leaders do need to 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 like own up to what's happening for them. People on their team want to know, you know, so what's happening for you? Are you, you know, going through a hard time as well? And do you have kids and are you dealing with homeschooling? And, you know, what's happening for you as as the leader so that we become more human with each other? Because at the end of the day, we are all human. We come to the, the, the table with, you know, trying to accomplish the same things for ourselves. And so that whole notion of feelings and, compassion is more critical today than it's ever been, right? So it's not that we've, this is new, because it's not new, um, but it's really how important is it right now and the focus that needs to happen. And I think leaders are starting to, to wrap their head around it. So one of the things that strikes me as you're saying that is, is we know it's not new, but the wake up call has been kind of gotten people's attention yeah. in a big way. Um, and it, it's emphasizing and highlighting it and how to do it. Um, the other thing that you're talking about is, um, yeah, really, really how to have those conversations. How would you kind of summarize what you've learned 
what's your real pull through as a result of what you've observed and how you've worked with leaders this year and, and, and one or two key takeaways from everything we've talked about today? Yeah, I think the the one or two key takeaways for me and what I've learned in, in the, the interactions with the, the leaders that I've worked with this year is really that that integration, the harmonization of business and how we integrate the business goals, because we're still, you know, there to to serve the business and and succeed and and accomplish goals and you know drive revenue, obviously. So it's how do we integrate that with the human side, right? So that we become that one integrated, you know, kind of um, harmonized person, being, organization to be successful. So I think that there's the the pull through for me is the leader, the successful leader will be the one that can do that really well, integrate on that, harmonize with their teams to to still execute on their goals. So the more we can focus on that, I think the I think everybody will will learn from that. Um, and then get carried through to, to, to success and results. So, so it strikes me as you're saying that is a couple of things. Yep. Harmonizing, I love that word. It doesn't necessarily mean that there isn't any conflict or tension, but it's more about how you resolve things and how you integrate things to move forward. The second thing that you mentioned that, that strikes me is it's really about servant leadership. Like how do you, how do you care and serve your people? Because ultimately when we, it's so funny because when we talk about driving the business, right? Um, it's like, if you don't take care of your people, they're the ones that, that with you and for you drive the business. So then like, where are you? That's right. right. That's right. Cause if they're not, they are driving it. You're not going to have a business. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, this has been great, Eve. I mean, this is part of our ongoing conversation. I'll have you on again and sure. thanks for joining us today. Thank you. Absolutely. Until next time, I'm Sue Shaner with Community Forum.